Shalom, shalom. Bonsoir, bonjour. Si vous me regardez à partir de la Belgique, que Dieu vous bénisse. À partir de la France également, que Dieu vous bénisse. If you are watching me from Congo, uh, bonjour, bonsoir. Mbotenabino, nzambaza malamu, seigneur abatelabino. Uh, if you're watching me from Kenya, I'm Jambo, Salama, Karibu. And of course, if you're watching me across the seven continents of the earth, uh, we greet you here on a joyous life platform uh, where we are filled with the joy of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to another broadcast of me, Tina. Coming into the comfort of your home. Amen. It's always a privilege and honor to uh, come into the comfort of your home. Amen. Uh, once again, I welcome you here to the Joyous Life Ministries with me, Tina Bayer. Today, we'll be looking at uh, part two of the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. We'll be looking at part two of the power of the blood of Jesus. Amen. I love one scripture uh, that I felt impressed in my spirit throughout the whole week. It's found in the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 4. Amen. That's in the book of Ch Acts, sorry, chapter 6, verse 4. It reads, but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the world. Amen. You and I as God's children, amen, as God's ambassadors, God's elect, we will certainly give ourselves continually to prayer. Amen. We need to be praying at all times, at all times rather, without ceasing. Amen. The scripture recommends that you and I should pray at all times without ceasing. Amen. Because, you know, the, the, devil, the scripture says that the devil seeks who he, may, who he may destroy and devour, amen. He comes to still kill and to destroy. So we need to be alert at all times. We need to be discerning at all times. Therefore, as the scripture rightly says, that we should give ourselves continually to prayer and to the ministry of the word, amen. It's not just good enough to pray, but it's also good enough to read the word of God because the word of God is actually himself amen because the scripture says that he was first of all made he was he was he was word amen and then he became flesh and he dwelt among us amen so therefore you and i we need to give ourselves primarily continually to prayer amen praying of our season and of course to the ministry of the word amen the word of god because the word of god brings healing the word of god is sharper than any two-edged sword amen the word of god is living and active amen by reading the word of God, we get to know the plans he has for you and I and what he wants to do in our lives. Amen. The destiny he has for you. So how can you hear God speak if you don't read his word? How can you hear God talking to you? Because his word is how he will con communicate with you. Amen. Through his word. And of course, other different ways that God can speak to you and I. Amen. So like I've established that today we are looking at uh, part two, amen, of the power of the blood of Jesus. So before we go into our time of our teaching for this evening, I will share a word of prayer, amen. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, it once again, is a privilege, is an honor to come into your presence, Father, because in your presence, there is fullness of joy. And at your right hand, Father, there are pleasures forevermore. Thank you once again, Adonai, every day. I will never cease to say thank you for the breath of life they have given me and to my brother, Lord, in the continents of Africa, Asia, and Europe. Father, I pray that I may decrease and that you may increase, Lord. And Father, I pray once again that you may cleanse my lips of, my lips of clay, Lord. I may have a clarity of speech, Father, as I share your word, Lord. They may touch even one person, Father. Lord, I give you praise, I give you honor. As I always say, Father, it's all about you, not about me. All glory and honor belongs to you and only you. Father, sanctify this broadcast. I sanctify this broadcast with the blood of the Lamb. And I speak to the devil. He has no authority, no power over me, nor over my brother, my sister watching across nations. For in Jesus' precious, majestic name, I have prayed. Amen and amen. Well. Salama, welcome to the Jewish Life Ministries. Amen. Salama, by the way, means peace. Amen. Just like shalom. Shalom means peace. Salama also means peace in Swahili and other languages, I believe. Amen. So peace be unto you. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So last week we looked at the power of the blood, part one. Amen. So we are looking, we looked at five different ways that we can use the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. So uh, please do well by revisiting my video last week on the power of the blood, part one. And today we're looking at the power of the blood, part two, amen. We looked at five different ways that the blood can be used in the body of Christ. Uh, in our first, um, first um, 
sermon, if you like, part one last week. And we established that the precious of our Lord Jesus, sorry, the blood of the precious, uh, oh, sorry, I'm just getting myself um, mixed up then. The, the blood of Jesus Christ can be used five different ways that we looked last week, amen. Primarily, we said that the blood of Jesus represents life amen the blood of anything we establish that carries the life of that thing amen so your blood my brother my sister carries life amen the blood of an animal carries life therefore the blood of jesus christ likewise carries life amen we establish that our second uh, importance of looking at or using the blood of Jesus that the blood of Jesus has always been used as a ransom again the blood of Jesus amen the blood of Jesus of um, the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ has been used as a ransom again to exchange of life amen we established last week that uh, ransom means um, it could be uh, when, for, for instance, when somebody's been kidnapped and they they demand a ransom of money to their family in order to uh, exchange the money for to in order to release that person, a ransom has to be made. Amen. Meaning they have to give some sort of money, amen, so that they can release uh, the person that they've held captive, captive, um, they've, they've kidnapped. But in 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 the context of a Christian, of, a, of our Lord Jesus Christ, he had to die and he was exchanged as a ransom for you and I. His blood was exchanged as a, as a ransom for you and I so we can have life and have it more abundantly, amen. Thirdly, the blood of Jesus is used in a form of redemption. Amen. The blood of Jesus is used in a form of redemption, the forgiveness of our sins. Amen. So the blood of Jesus was shed on the cross of Calvary so you and I can have life, yes, so that our sins may be forgiven as well. Amen. Nothing they've committed under the Son that our Lord Jesus Christ was not able to forgive you because he took everything on the cross of Calvary when he died. Amen. Fourthly, the blood of Jesus was used as a covenant. Amen. The blood of Jesus is used as a covenant. Amen. In full, in your own timing, you can read in the first in the book of First Corinthians, chapter eleven, verse twenty-five. Amen. As we know, the Last Supper with the disciples. Amen. Jesus sat with his with, with his uh, twelve disciples. Amen. He spoke to him. He spoke to them rather about the uh, his, his his coming. His his as uh, um. His, his, his crucifixion, amen. He spoke to them about the importance of always eating uh, his blood, sorry, drinking his blood and eating his body, amen, in remembrance of um, his death, amen, and resurrection. So you and I are always reminded to take communion, amen, in remembering our uh, Lord Jesus Christ, his death, his, his burial and his resurrection, amen. So he did this, he did this, uh, he explained the importance of partaking of his table, of his flesh and of his blood, amen. That's found in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 25, which is also symbolizes the covenant that Christ has for you, has, has um, the covenant between you and I, between you and I as God's children, not between you and I, between God's children and himself, amen. So between Jesus and the body of Christ symbolizes the covenant, amen, of his blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary. So every time we partake of his table, we, we, we take communion, we are remembering the death, amen, of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are remembering the burial, the resurrection, amen, as we partake of his communion, hallelujah. And the last but not least, uh, the fifth, if you like, um, importance or significance, importance of partaking of the blood of Jesus Christ or using the blood of Jesus Christ, as we looked last week, is that the blood of Jesus purifies. Amen. The blood of Jesus purifies or sanctifies, if you like. The blood of Jesus clar uh, sanctifies and purifies us for more our wrongdoing, for more last sins. Amen. Therefore, the enemy cannot stand before God and, uh, uh, and judge you and condemn you. Uh, based on your wrongdoings or based on your sin, based on your old nature, because you are no longer an old nature, amen. You are now a partaker of Christ's divine natures, amen, because you are born again Christian. When Christ died, you died with him. When he rose, you rose with him. And the scripture goes on to say that we are seated with Christ Jesus at the right hand of the Father, amen. Isn't it wonderful to know that you and I are seated at the right hand of the Father? And all this was the payment that Christ took in Jordan on the cross of Calvary so you and I can be set free, that you and I can be saved, hallelujah. 
Thank you, Father. Father, we thank you once again. Amen. Lord, we are praying as we embark on a second part of the power of the blood of Jesus. May you speak to us, Father. May we have revelation. May we have clarity in your word, Father. Illumination in the word of God. Amen. So today we are looking at part four, the remaining, sorry, part one rather, the remaining five uh, in, in, in five importance or significance importance of using the blood of Jesus, amen, in the body of Christ. So we are looking at the remaining five, amen. Thank you, Father. So number one, the blood of Jesus destroys all works of the enemy and any covenant made to speak against God's children, amen. So we use the blood of Jesus still today in the body of Christ because we know that the blood of Jesus destroys all works of the enemy and any covenant made to speak against God's children. How many times you hear people, they will gather around, they'll be plotting evil against you and your loved ones. They'll be saying all sorts of things that you'll never mount up to anything. That you know, that job that you've embarked on, you'll see how far you're going to go. Uh, you know, so all sorts of evil doing that they are planning be, um, be, without, without your knowledge, without you knowing. So it's very important to know that the blood of Jesus destroys all works of the enemy. Whatever the enemy is planning will not come to manifestation in this month of December, especially the fact that we are coming almost to the end of the of the year. So we use the blood of Jesus against the plan of the devil, against his demons, against every work of the enemy planned against you and I in the mighty name of Jesus. So the blood of Jesus destroys the works of the enemy and any covenant made to speak against God's children. They may gather and make all sorts of covenants, but be rest assured, my brother, my sister, the blood of Jesus is speaking on your behalf. No weapon from against you shall prosper. Any tongue that rises against you in judgment, you shall condemn in, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So number one, we know that the blood of Jesus destroys all works of the enemy and any covenant made to speak against God's children. If we turn to the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19. That's in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 19. It says, Behold, I have given you authority to tread on serpents and scorpions. Amen. And over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will, will, in, will injure you. Amen. Nothing will be able to touch you, my brother, my sister. Because you and I, we should know, we should be rest assured that we are being given power, amen, and authority to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So the enemy cannot touch you and I because we're being given power over all his works, over all his doings, amen. Therefore, you and I are untouchable, hallelujah. We need to know the authority and the power that we possess as God's children, amen. So we have been given power and authority over serpents and over scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing will, inj will injure you and I, amen. Nothing will touch you and I, amen. Not nothing, absolutely nothing, amen. The enemy has lost the battle. This battle, he lost it 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary, amen. Because Christ won the battle for you and I on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago, amen. So therefore you and I are untouchable. We are, we are untouchable, amen. The enemy cannot do anything. If God is for you and I, who can be against us? Nobody, amen. I love the scripture that says, a thousand may fall at our side and 10,000 at our right hand side, but it shall not come near you and I. It shall not come near our dwelling, amen. Because we are covered by the blood of the lamb, amen. If you knew who you are and the blood that was purchased, the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for you and I. So therefore the enemy is scared because every time we invoke the blood of Jesus, every time we plead the blood of Jesus, it reminds us, it reminds the devil of the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary, crying before the heavenly father. That blood still cries on your behalf. The blood of Jesus still cries on your behalf and my behalf, amen. Thank you, Jesus. Secondly. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy for the saints. Amen. The blood of Jesus speaks mercy for you and I, my brother. As we go boldly before the front of grace to obtain mercy, the blood of Jesus speaks mercy for you and I every single day. 
Amen. We can read in the book of Hebrews, chapter 12, verse 24, it says, To Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of, spring, of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Amen. And Jesus, the mediator. What's the word? What's the meaning of a mediator? They can be like an advocate. Amen. Somebody who's, 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 who stands between two people advocating on their behalf and then speaking on their behalf fighting on their behalf amen like a lawyer will stand in a courtroom representing their client for instance acting on their behalf that's how jesus is acting on you on, you, on our behalf amen so that's in the book of hebrews chapter 12 verse 24 to jesus the mediator of the new covenant amen we are of the new covenant, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. Amen. The blood of Jesus speaks better things than that of Abel. Amen. It cries out louder than that of Abel. Amen. Thank you, Father. Thirdly, the blood of Jesus speaks because you and I are no longer under the curse of the law. Hallelujah. You and I, my brother, my sister, are no longer under the curse of the law because the blood of Jesus speaks, speaks, amen, because you and I are no longer under the curse of the law. We are no longer under the curse of the law, amen. We have been redeemed. We have been purchased by the blood of the Lamb. We have been, we have been forgiven, amen. We are no longer under the curse of the law because cursed is he who hung on the tree for you and I, amen. We can read the book of Galatians, chapter 3, verse 13. It says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Amen. My brother, my sister, you should be rest assured that Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. He has redeemed you and I from the curse of the law. So if your family says that they are cursed, that you have been cursed, you know, we are no, once you become a newborn again Christian, you are no longer cursed. Rather, you are blessed. Amen. Because the scripture says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He has set us free from the curse of the law. Many times you hear people saying, um, I'm a Christian, but I don't feel that um, you know, things are going wrong in my life. Perhaps well, I'm cursed. Perhaps my parents are cursed. Because perhaps my family are cursed. Your family and your generation and your family and your background and, you know, they can be cursed, but you are not cursed. Why? Because you've carried on the new nature of Christ Jesus. Because you are a newborn again Christian. Amen. Because Christ has redeemed you from the curse of the law. Now it's for you to introduce that same Christ to your family so they can be set free from the enemy. So they can be set free from every bondage, from every curse. They are still cursed because they have not come to Christ Jesus. Once you come to Christ Jesus, my brother, my sister, behold, everything becomes you. You take on the nature of Christ. Amen. The blood that was shed on the cross for you will start to speak on your behalf because you have that covenant with the Father. Amen. You are no longer cursed. You are blessed. Amen. The Abrahamic blessing is upon your life. You read Deuteronomy verse 28. Sorry, chapter 28, verses 1 to 13, talks about all the, 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 the Abrahamic blessing that was pronounced on Abraham. Because we are, we are, we are the covenant that was made with, with Abraham, that Abraham will have many children. God told Abraham, can you count the stars in the sky? He couldn't. He said, as many of these stars they can see in the, in, the, in the sky, that's how many children he will give unto him. And those children are me and you, you and I, rather. Amen. We are God's children. We are the covenant that God made with Abraham. Hallelujah. So therefore you are not cursed. You are blessed. Don't believe that you have been bound somewhere, that you, you are cursed, you have been bewitched somewhere. Because the once you are reading the word of God, you have been set free, you have been delivered, my brother, my sister. Why do you still believe? Why do you still doubt? Believe that you have been saved. Amen. As you, are, you know that you have been saved. So therefore believe that you are, you are blessed. Now, no more curse. Amen. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. Amen. So Christ had, because, had to become a curse for you and I on the cross. For it is written, curse is everyone who hangs on the tree. Amen. 
So when Christ hung on that tree, he took all your curses, my brother. He took all your pain, amen. So you can have life and have it more abundantly. You are no longer cursed, amen, because cursed is everyone who hung on, on a tree. We were cursed before, yes, but because Christ took all our curses on the cross, because he was hanged on that cross. So your curses, my curses, everything was taken upon Christ himself. The burden, everything, Christ took it for you. It's like, for instance, you are, you are carrying a heavy bag. And you can't travel with that heavy bag. Or you can't get on a bus. Or you can't, you know, you need support. Or, you know, you're walking. You have so many things in your hands. And you need support. Somebody will come. In order to release you, relieve you sort of from that burden, to help you ease you from carrying those heavy baggage that you may have, they'll ask you for support. They'll ask, so they'll ask you, do you want me to help you with those bags? They will take all those bags away from you and you'll be walking, feeling light. Likewise, Christ took everything your sickness, your pain, your worry, your financial trouble. Everything Christ took you on the cross of Calvary. Amen. So you don't have to worry about anything. When you pray, remember on this, stand firm on this word. And remember, you have to speak it out loud to remind the enemy. When we are praying, we have to use the word of God. Because the word of God is weapon for you and I. So remind the enemy that the book of Galatians chapter 3 verse 13 says, Christ has redeemed that. Put your name there. Christ has redeemed me, Tina, from the curse of the law, having become a curse for me. For it is written, curse is everything. Sorry, curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. Amen. So you are no longer cursed, my brother, my sister. You are blessed. Amen. It's important to know that for yourself. Read the word for yourself. Everything is hidden in the book of life. Amen. Everything is written. You know, I love the way God said to uh, Joshua that this book of the law shall not depart from you. Amen. What's the, that book of the law? Is the word of God that we should read it day and night. By reading the word of God day and night, we will discern, we will know the plan that he has for you and I. Amen. He says he has good plans for you and I. Not plans of evil, but good plans. Amen. God doesn't, doesn't, he doesn't mean evil to you and I. He means good. Only the, the devil, only the enemy means evil, but God means good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. The fourth reason for why, the fourth reasons for using the blood of Jesus as his children, as Christians, is that the blood of Jesus advocates for his saints. Amen. The blood of Jesus advocates for his saints. Genesis chapter 4 verse 10 says, And he said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the, from the ground. We can give a bit of, a bit of background uh, concerning Genesis 4, chapter 10. Amen. Sorry, Genesis chapter 10, verse 10. Genesis chapter 4, rather, verse 10. We can give a bit of a background to the story. God was speaking to Cain. Amen. And he said, I blood cries out to me from the ground we all know the story very well that eve had the first human that god created adam and eve they had two sons they had cain and abel amen cain was an was the elder brother and abel was the second younger brother amen cain was a farmer and uh, abel was a, was a shepherd amen so cain offered um sacrifices to god he just selected few rotten fruits you know and offered to God as a living sacrifice, whereby Cain, of, sorry, um, um, Abel rather, offered a more pleasing sacrifice unto the Father. He offered a lamb, amen, as a shepherd. He took the best lamb ever and, and offered it to, to God, amen. With a, with a gratitude, with, with, a, thank, with a, um, a gracious heart, if you like, you know, heart full of joy when he offered the lamb unto God. However, his brother, Cain, got jealous. He was unhappy and he killed his brother. That was the, that's the first murder uh, committed in the Bible, in the book of Genesis. So then God told Abel, told Cain rather, he said, what have you done? 
the voice of your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. So when Cain killed his brother, his brother's blood, Abel's blood was crying out to God from the ground. So likewise, you and I, my brother, my sister, the blood of Jesus that cries out louder than the blood of Abel is crying for you and I on our behalf. Amen. So therefore, the enemy is scared every time that we speak, every time that we use the blood of Jesus against him. Because the blood of Jesus cries against him. The blood of Jesus speaks against the devil. The blood of Jesus advocates for you and I. Every time we cry on to Jesus, every time we plead the blood of Jesus, know that there is power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. There is power in that blood. Hallelujah. Just like Abel's blood cried out to God in heaven from the ground, Jesus' blood is crying for you and I, my, uh, my, my brother, my sister. Be rest assured. Don't be scared anymore. Have peace of mind amen when you go to when you know, the scripture says i will lay me down and i will wake again because the lord sustains me so when you go to bed be rest assured that you are not alone that the blood of jesus is covering you if you have to plead the blood of jesus before you go to bed plead the blood of jesus amen speak the blood of jesus because once you do that the enemy and his demons are scared hallelujah The fifth reason why the blood of Jesus is important to you and I is that the blood of Jesus is proof that Jesus died for us. Amen. Without the shedding of blood on the cross, how would you and I know that Christ died? How would you and I know that Christ died? Now the scripture says that he was like a lamb being led to be slaughtered. The stripes that were hit, hit um, the, the Roman um, beat Christ to death. That's what the scriptures are. The stripes, by his stripes, we are healed. Christ suffered for you and I, so you can have life. Amen. That blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary for you and I. The crown of thorn that was placed on his head. Piecing through his head, blood coming out. It was stood for you and I, my brother, my sister. He suffered so much pain, so much anguish, but he still did not give up. You know, in a, in a garden of Gethsemane, he guess, uh, I can't pronounce the word, yes. He cried out, he said, Father, this is too much for me, just paraphrasing, of course. He wants to, if there's a way that God can take away that cup, the Garden of Gethsemane, guess, how do you pronounce it? Guess, Gethsemane, yes. The Garden of Gethsemane, yes. So Christ cried out in so much anguish, in so much pain, because he knew that the cross he was about to take on was too much. And he asked God if he can take that cup away so he can be free. But he said, nevertheless, I will do it. Nevertheless, he will go through that pain. Through that, through that suffering. Amen. So therefore, you and I, we need to know that Christ paid it all for you and I on the cross of Calvary. We don't have to worry anymore. We don't have to be fearful anymore. Because the blood speaks for you, saints. The blood speaks for you and I. The blood of Jesus advocates for you and I, my brother, my sister. So like I said, the fifth reason why we use the blood of Jesus because we remember that the blood of Jesus is proof that Jesus died for you and I. Every time we, we partake of his blood, we are reminded that we are crucified with him. Amen. Every time we partake of his communion, of the communion of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are reminded that when he died, we died with him. When he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, we were also crucified with him. But now, the good news that we have been resurrected with him, amen. And we are seated with him at the right hand of the Father. And even better, Christ is interceding, intercedes for you and I every single day. Amen. Thank you, Father. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 53 to 57 says, 
Then Jesus said to them, Most assuredly I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. So we need to be drinking of his blood and eating his flesh. Amen. Which resembles a communion. Hallelujah. By doing so, you and I have life in him. Amen. 54 goes on to say, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life. Hallelujah. So when we eat his flesh and drink his blood, you and I have eternal life. We will have eternal life with him in heaven. Amen. And he says, and I will raise him up at the last day. Amen. Christ will raise you and I up at the last day. 55 goes on to say, for my flesh is a food indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood abides in me, and I in him. As the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so he who feeds me feeds on me will live because of me. Amen. That's the promise that we have. Every time we partake of the Lord's um, communion, every time we eat his flesh, every time we eat, we drink his blood. Amen. We spend eternity with him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So be rest assured, my brother, my sister, that any time you evoke the blood of Jesus, the case is no longer about you, but about Jesus. Amen. Any time you score, you plead the blood of Jesus, every time you invoke the blood of Jesus, it speaks on your behalf. It comes and speaks on your behalf. It's no longer about what you have done, but it's about Christ's blood crying unto the Father. And the enemy hates that. Because the scripture says, for if they have known, they will not crucify our Lord, our Savior. Amen. The enemy thought he was smart. That Christ died, yes, that he has won. No, Christ was smarter than that. Amen. Because now every time the blood speaks out for you and I, cries out for you and I, and the enemy trembles. Amen. He gets scared. Demons get scared. I love the scripture that says, at the mentioning of the name of Jesus, Satan tremble and demons flee. Amen. So you have that power, not just in the name of Jesus, but you also have, there is power also in the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's because we don't know the authority that we have, I always say. We don't know whose we are. It's just like, for instance, if you are a son of a king, you don't need to travel with your passport. Or if you're the if you are the king yourself, you don't need to travel with a passport because your face is on the currencies, on the money that we spend every single day. For instance, here where you where we are in the UK, the king's face is on on the on the money that we carry. So when he travels, he doesn't need to have his passport with him because he is the passport himself. If that makes if that makes any sense. So you and I, we are God's ambassador. We represent him everywhere that we go. We are his children. We are are one with him. The scripture says, what you see my father do, that's what what you see me do, that's what my father uh, 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 did. So what we are doing here on earth is what Christ did. And the scripture says that greater miracles, greater signs and wonders will follow us will follow you and I, will do greater things than Christ himself did. So why do we limit ourselves as Christians? Why are we fearful? Why are we scared of the enemy? Day and night, you're just binding the devil. I bind you, devil. I bind you, this. Stand firm on God's word. The scripture says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Speak with authority. Not in your own words. Use the word of God. The word of God is like going to, an, to a war. As an army, you go to war. You need, your, you need your guns or you need your weapons with you. You can't just say, you can't just wear your uniform and go to war. They'll kill you. You need to have weapons. So we can't stand in God's presence just saying mere words. We need to use. And as Christians, 
the word of God is, is, is a bullet, if you like. The word of God is, is the weapon that we use as Christians. No wonder why you're scared of the devil. No wonder why you're scared of the enemy. Every little attack, you get scared. But no, the, the more you progress in the things of God, the more you pray, the more you read, the more you have that close intimacy with the Father. The greater the, 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 your destiny, the greater the battle. Because where God is taking you, your eyes has not seen, your ears has not heard, nor has it entered your heart to see the things that God has for you. Amen. God has great plans for you. Perhaps that's why the enemy is, attack is attacking you because there's a great destiny upon your life. The enemy never attacks anybody who's, who doesn't have a calling upon their lives. No one, you know, he doesn't attack people who are just, you know, laid back and, you know, they don't pray, they don't read because he knows that he's got them under control. But if you know who you are, the destiny that God has for you, and he can perceive. That's when Christ was born. Pharaoh perceived that they should that Christ was born, that they should go and kill all boys under the age of two. To cut off Christ. So his destiny will not come to manifestation. That's what the enemy does. When he perceives that there's greatness in you, he will send all sorts of trouble, all sorts of attack. Even your own family can turn against you. He will use every tactic he can to destroy you so you don't um, manifest your calling if you like so you don't fulfill your destiny people say things that will discourage you that will hurt you even people even believers he will use believers against you he can even sometimes you use even men of god against you so you can give up but my brother my sister don't give up Speak the blood of Jesus. Use, invoke the blood of Jesus in every situation you find yourself in and know that you are victorious already. Before they, you even start the battle, you know already that you are overcomer, that you've already won the battle. Because the scriptures that we are overcomers, we are, con we are more than conquerors, we are victorious in Christ Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you so much for your word tonight. Father, pray for my brother, my sister who may be watching across nations, Lord. Father, I pray that primarily that you strengthen them, Lord. Remind them, Father, that they belong to you, that the enemy has no hold over their lives, that the enemy has no power over them, that you have the final say in their lives, that you have power over their lives, over them, Jehovah. Father, no weapon has formed against them shall prosper. And any tongue that rises against them in judgment, they will condemn, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus over our finances, Lord. Whatever we have obtained in life, Jehovah, over our health, Lord, our mind, we plead the blood of Jesus in every single area of our life, from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet, Lord. No devil, no demon, no enchantment, no sorcery, no divination against my brother, nor my sister, Lord. We are victorious, Adonai. We have, we have won the victory for us, Lord. On the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. The blood of Jesus speaks for you and I. Speaks for us, Jehovah. It cries out for us, Lord. The blood that speaks that cries better than the blood of Abel. We are not afraid, Lord. We are not scared of the enemy. We are not scared of any man. For what can men do unto us? Nothing. If you are for us, Lord, who can be against us, Lord? We are encouraged in your word. Because we walk with you. For it is in you that we, we live and move and have our being, Adonai. I pray, Lord, for my brother, my sister who may be discouraged, who, are, who is bound, who's been, who's depressed, who's fearful because of the plan of the enemy. Father, I pray that you've set them free from the work of darkness. Set them free and release them, Lord. For you have said in your words, Adonai, for whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the covenant that you made through the blood of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because we are partakers of your divine nature. We give you praise. We give you honor. For it is in Jesus' precious 
matchless name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Thank you, Father. As always, we never like to end our broadcast without asking you to give your life to Christ. Amen. It's very, very important to give your life to Christ. Amen. All you have to say is, Dear Lord, forgive me. I know that I have done wrong by not giving you my life. I surrender, Lord. Wash me, purify me, sanctify me with the blood of the Lamb. Come and live inside of me for the rest of my life. I want to know you, Lord. I've been running away from you, but today I surrender my life to you. I present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto you, Lord, which is my reasonable service, Lord. Come and live inside of me for the rest of my life. For it is in Jesus' precious name I've prayed. Amen. If you have made that declaration, that confession, my brother, my sister, you repeated that prayer after me. You are now a born again Christian. What does that mean? It simply means that your name is registered in heaven. That if you were to die, you spend eternity with God in heaven. Amen. The enemy has lost and Christ has gained. Amen. And if you used to know Christ, you backslidden, you've categorically refused to serve God, you've denounced Christ. You've gone back into the world. Come back, my brother, my sister, before it's too late. We are living in these last days. Christ is coming very soon. And I wouldn't want you to miss the trumpet. Amen. So come back to him and rededicate your life to him. All you have to say is, Father, forgive me for going back into the world. I come back to you once again. Please receive me with your open arms. Just the way the prodigal son was received by his father. Receive me once again. I represent the prodigal son and you represent the father. I open my heart to you, my life to you. Let me start from where I stopped with you, Lord. Order my step to guide me for the rest of my life. Amen. Father, thank you for every single person under the sound of my voice who have given their lives to you, Jehovah, and remade and rededicated their lives back to you once again. Father, cover them and protect them with the blood of the Lamb. Lord, no devil shall touch them. No negative um, words from the enemy will come to, to hinder their hearts, to, to bring negative into their mind, Lord. Father, I cover their mind with the blood of the, with the, blood of the Lamb. I cover them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet with the blood of Jesus, Lord. Father, bring them closer to you like never before. Father, bring the right men and women of God who will take them, who will teach them your word, Father who will be good examples, who will be a good company in their lives. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you honor. For this in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Congratulations to you for giving your life to Christ. And congratulations to you for um, rededicating your life to Christ again. Amen. I rest assured you, my brother. I can rest assure you that, you're, um, that there's a party for you in heaven. Amen as you've given your life to Christ, and as you've rededicated your life to him again. Because you're acknowledging that without God, you are nothing. That you need him, amen. That without God, we're absolutely nobodies. We need God every single day of our life. The scripture says that only a fool will say that God does not exist. But God is, Christ is well and alive, amen. Thank you, Father. Until we meet again, into the comforts of your home. My name is Tina. God bless you. May he cause his countenance to shine upon you and your loved one. Shalom, and peace be unto you. Shalom. Bye-bye.